Good. Oh my god, that's so loud. One sec. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Okay. Windows likes to uh, to change its microphone volume settings just uh, randomly. Oh no, I've disappeared. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me while I have a coughing fit right at the start of the stream. <laughs> All right, welcome back, guys. I hope we're doing well. Welcome back to the stream. I hope we all had a fantastic Christmas. Uh, welcome to the chat, guys. Acer, welcome, brother. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Manical, welcome, dude. Uh, Ramsey, welcome to the chat, dude. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Nephelius as well. Welcome. I hope we're all doing well. Hope we're all doing well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm doing very well, yeah, Manacle. Thank you very much for asking, dude. Hope everybody else... <clears throat> God. <sighs> Excuse me, right. <laughs> yes, I am fine. I just... I think I just swallowed... Uh, I think I just swallowed something down the wrong hole, something like that. I am fine, anyway. I'm going to go uh, grab a, a drink of water in a sec. But uh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> Hope we're doing well. Sorry to keep you... Uh, I've just been posting an, another scheduled stream for actually later on this evening, um, which uh, you guys can uh, go and check out if you like. Uh, about 10.30 tonight, we'll be doing another stream, so uh, feel free to have a look. All right, all right, all right. Get him some milk. <laughs> yes, I should stay alive, dude. I should stay alive. No worries. Dave, welcome Welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. I am doing well, thank you. Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, 
still stuck inside, but uh, yeah, not doing too badly. Not doing too badly. <laughs> yeah, um, I might not sound like it, but uh, this is not actually a, <clears throat> a serious cough. It's literally just, um, I think I just swallowed something down the wrong hole, so. <laughs> like the hive is, yeah. <laughs> well, if you see my, if you saw my thumbnail for this uh, stream, then, uh, you know, we're going to be flying a bit of cargo today. Uh, so I thought I'd keep the high vis here just to keep with the theme. Why not? Why not? Um, but yes, indeed. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year. We'll be bringing that in later on this evening. So you're more than welcome to join me. Fly along. There's a really cool add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator that actually um, spawns in a bunch of fireworks at midnight in various different cities. Uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of a flight uh, over the UK, uh, some kind of cross-country uh, flight and uh, we'll be taking in the fireworks at midnight. It should be quite cool. I think I'm going to try and figure out a route that ends up in London at about midnight, um, and we're gonna gonna check that out. So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, just before we continue on, anyway, guys, I am just going to grab a drink real quick, <laughs> and uh, I'll be back with you. So. Uh, I'll uh, I'll leave you over here. You guys can enjoy the uh, the beautiful uh, spinner from this uh, A300 uh, GE engine. I'll be back in just a moment. Right, we're back. We're back, and uh, I'm not choking anymore. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, then, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's uh, let's get going then. So we're going to be flying in the uh, the A300 today in X plane. Should be a lot of fun. I've uh, they've just just released a, a brand new update for this aircraft. And um, I actually uh, downloaded that and had a and play around with it yesterday. And um, it's really, really good. Really, really enjoying it. And um, they've made some really, really nice changes to it. And it's just fantastic, to be quite honest. I mean, it was a great aircraft to begin with. And uh, now it's just even better. So, um, yeah, looking forward to sharing this with you guys today. And um, yeah, first of all, just checking out the outside modeling, you can see here, I mean, it was already a good model to begin with, but they've also added this sort of option for sort of more worn look on the liveries that uh, some liveries have, some of them don't. I think it varies per livery, and I think the livery creator can vary it as well. Uh, but as you can see, nice bit of wear and tear on the uh, aircraft all over the place in areas you would expect that to see it. Um, they've completely redone the engines as well. So you've got these beautiful GE engines here. You can see the fan blades look super, super nice, super crisp, all the textures and everything just looks super nice. So I'm really impressed with that. And um, 
Yeah, as you can see, we're MNG Airlines today. It's Turkish cargo company, and uh, we're going to be flying this real-world flight from uh, East Midlands in the UK. We're going to be flying over to um, to Cologne Bonn. This is a real-world flight. Like I say, it took place actually earlier on today. We're going to be using the same call sign, uh, which is going to be Black Sea 551 Heavy. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and jump on into the aircraft here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think this... Uh, I've not streamed X-Plane in a while. And it's making my computer sweat a bit, I think. The dark side. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Alright, let's uh, head on up the stairs then and uh, jump on. Alright, so here we are on the sort of, I guess this is the cabin, quote-unquote, area. Uh, where, obviously, there's space for a few passengers, but uh, not too many. Uh, we've got the door open here and some air stairs, obviously. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll get a bit of lighting on in this entryway area. We'll get the light on for the loader outside as well, which we're going to uh, do in just a second here. And we'll go ahead and open the cargo door. So if I press this button right here, you can actually jump back outside. And is it going to open? It's not opening. Maybe I have to have the aircraft powered to do that. Possibly do. Possibly do. Yeah, I guess I do. Um, so yeah, nice little control panel there as well. I believe there is one here as well. If I just go through the curtain here, I believe there is another panel over here as well. I think this is exactly the same, but let me just check this. Yeah, it is. It's exactly the same. All right. Nevertheless, let's, uh, go back through then and uh, we'll start getting set up. I'm just going to turn the music down a little bit more. There we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. So um, we've got a lavatory here as well, which we we can actually use. So uh, yeah, just in case we need a a, a bit of relief, <laughs> um, we'll head on into the flight deck here. So you guys know what this aircraft is. I have flown it on stream before, um, but it's just been polished up really, really, really nicely on uh, this version two update. So uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, check out the EFB here. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to call up. Uh, well, we've got external power connected. So let's go ahead and uh, get the aircraft powered on so we can uh, get that cargo door open and we'll get some stuff uh, loaded on. All right. So <clears throat> up to the top, we'll turn the batteries on. Turn the sound up a little bit here for the sim. And we'll get the external power on. Fans are quite loud on this aircraft, so I'm just going to have to be a bit careful with the uh, with the volume. And um, we'll turn the nav lights on. And uh, before I do anything else, I'm uh, I'm just going to come back down to the EFB, and we're going to call in the loader here, and we'll start that process happening. So we'll request the loader. And then if we jump back outside here, there we go. We can see the uh, the door actually opens on its own there uh, when you recall in the loader. So that's the door opening and the loader's coming in down here. So we'll just let it do its thing. But does it flush? <laughs> I don't think it does, actually. I don't know if I've actually tried that, to be quite honest. I might have to give that a try later on. <laughs> Kyle, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. So we should get the loader in place here. And then, uh, yeah, there's a little uh, truck driving in some of our cargo here. Beautiful. Okay. So we'll jump back in the flight deck whilst we wait for uh, the um, loader to, uh, to drive up here. And uh, we'll start getting set up on the overhead. So we'll get the IRSs set to nav up top. 
and then we'll just do uh, a quick flow on the uh, the overhead panel here so coming down the left side everything's all good here we're just looking for the white lights that need to be extinguished really um, also anything else we want to set up so no smoking can go to auto seat belt signs can stay off for now as we don't have any uh, fuel loaded yet we're about to do that in uh, a second here and we'll go ahead and leave these switches for now as these won't necessarily work properly until the IRS is aligned. Um, I'll turn the dome light on. I don't think it's going to make a difference this time of day. Um, we'll get a bit of power in the galley. No, no sense to not have that uh, powered. Uh, moving up here, everything looks good. We'll move this to emergency and essential. Coming down the middle, uh, we'll do a test of the APU. I'll test the uh, fire extinguishing system anyway. So that's a good test. We'll wait for the loop B light to go out. That's good. And we'll test the squib there as well. So that's fine. Great stuff. We'll get the fuel pumps turned on. And then everything else is looking good here. Great stuff. And then coming up here, uh, window heat can come on as well as the probe heat. Um, cargo compartment, compartment smoke detector, um, we'll go for a loop test on that one, that one's looking fine, there's no chime on that one, and then these don't work, I don't think. Okay, go ahead and turn that all on, and the main cargo smoke detection as well, quick test of that, you can see that is all working and fine. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Okay, and then uh, carrying on up. Cockpit doors unlocked. That's fine. Uh, we'll get the crew and... Is that Cura? Does that say Courier? Okay. Crew and Courier oxygen supply on. And uh, we'll put this to CRT. Uh, we'll just cycle the isolation valve. Like so. That's all good. And then coming down here, everything else is looking set up okay. Uh, we'll turn the emergency exit lights to arm and the standby compass light on as well. And we'll give a quick test of the annunciator lights. As you can see, everything looking good there. Great stuff. Okay, that's that done. Okay, so that's the overhead panel set up. We'll come down here. We'll set our landing elevation. Initially, we're going to do a flex takeoff, so I'll select that for now just so I uh, don't miss it later. Everything else looks good there. Turn these lights up. VH can go on to minus 5. We'll come back a bit and just turn some of the lighting up in here as well. It's, it is getting a bit dark here. Do the same on the first officer side. Don't need the map light on. Okay, so that's looking good. We don't have our weather information yet, but I will just uh, get that in a moment. Great stuff, great stuff. Coming down here, <coughs> uh, we shall set up our MCD. We need to align the IRS in uh, a moment. We'll do that in just a second here. So coming down here, we'll turn some of the integral lights on down here as well. We'll turn VHF1 on, on send and receive. And we'll turn the volume up just a little bit there. Which reminds me, I do need to connect to uh, vPilot. So we're going to be MNB552. We'll connect. And there was a controller online at this uh, airport, but I'm not sure if they will be on anymore. Doesn't look like they are. That's fine. So uh, let's use the ACAR system here to get uh, some of our information. So first of all, we shall uh, request company route. So this is going to bring the route in that uh, I have made already on Simbrief. So if we jump back over to the uh, MCDU here, you can see, well, I align IRS first of all. Company route uplink done. And you can see it's filled out all our information here. The only thing it hasn't filled out, I'm not sure why it doesn't do this. 
um, but uh, it doesn't put in your alternate for whatever reason. And our alternate for today is going to be Amsterdam. So we'll stick that in there and we'll click return and then we'll go align IRS and uh, that's going to set that off. Okay. Cool. So coming back down to the ACAR system, let's go ahead and get some weather information. So we'll go uh, ACARS ATC. We'll go weather request and uh, we'll go for a meta because obviously the ATIS isn't going to be available. There's no controller on currently at the field. So we'll go ahead and just get the meta. So we'll go EG NX. And I think it, it comes through more or less straight away. There we go. So we've got that and uh, we can go ahead and print this. And I'm going to be quiet for just a second here while it prints because there's a really cool sound associated. In fact, I'll just turn it up for a minute. Here we go. And then listen for the rip sound. <laughs> I, I love little details like that, as you guys probably are well aware. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. So we've got our weather information there and we can go return. And uh, that actually puts the note right here. So QNH is 1013, standard pressure actually. So we're actually on the right QNH already. Um, that's interesting actually. This uh, altitude, I'm not sure if that's actually matching correctly. Um, let's just have a quick look here. Let's just check what weather the um, X plane is actually using here. So yeah, one zero one three. Okay, three hundred six feet. Okay, so maybe it is right, and I'm just uh, I've just got a poor memory, perhaps. There we go. Okay, cool. So we'll leave that there for now, and uh, we'll go ahead and get the loader started. So let's go have a look at this because this is quite cool. The loader is actually going to take the cargo here and load it on board. And then it's actually going to stay on board, a bit like the Beluga, if you guys remember that. And it's actually going to stay on board for the rest of the flight, which is uh, quite quite nifty. <laughs> hey, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hope you're doing well. Have I tried the MCDU on iPad yet for fly-by-wire? Uh, it's AC Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, um, Just very briefly. Not I haven't actually done a flight with it yet, but uh, I have... Um, yeah, I've had a mess about with it. I, I had it up on my phone and I just had a bit of a mess. And uh, yeah, it is really, really cool. I do enjoy it. Um, and I think that's going to be quite a nice one, actually, I think. I might actually use that. Um, so yeah, yeah, I've given it a go. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're doing some really cool things with the A32NX recently that I wasn't honestly expecting them to come out with, which is just uh, just brilliant, to be honest. Zach Attack, welcome to the chat, buddy. Hope you're doing well, mate. Good to see you. I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, how have you been? Uh, Chris, good evening, sir. Hope you're doing well, or good afternoon. Can't stay around, but hopefully be around for tonight's firework flight. Amazing, dude. Well, hopefully see you tonight then. Um, but uh, yeah, take it easy, dude. Hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Yeah, happy New Year's Eve as well uh, to you too, Zach. Um, it's actually in the afternoon for us here in the UK, but uh, yeah, good morning to you, sir. All right, all right. So we're getting our cargo loaded on. And uh, speaking of loading, let's go ahead and do our load sheet here. So zero fuel weight for today is going to be uh, 121.2. So 121.2 tons and the fuel required for the trip is 13.2 tons. We'll go ahead and load that. And uh, we shall go send to takeoff perf and we'll do our takeoff calculation here. So we're going to go EGNX runway 27 for takeoff and we shall do an 80s request. Obviously, it's not an ATIS. I think it's uh, 
I think it just uses meta information. All right, so we've got wind 240 at 14 knots. Uh, outside air temperature is 14 degrees. Quite toasty in the UK here at the moment. So we'll have anti-ice off. Uh, takeoff weight is going to be 134 tons, uh, which is about right. I, I can't quite get the figures to match exactly on Simbrief, but that's, so, that's about right. It's 0.6 off, so I'll take that. Um, so we've got uh, packs on and then a uh, flex takeoff, which is fine. So we'll go compute and get our figures. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So we've got a uh, V1 of 148, a VR 149, and a V2 of 151, a flex of 53 degrees, and uh, flaps 15, 15, along with 1.2 up on the trim. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I think the IRS should be aligned by now. No, it's not. Okay. So we'll just wait for that to do its thing. Yeah, that should be a bit longer yet. So I can't I can't set my V2 speed until that's done or the flex temperature. Uh, so we'll just wait for that to happen. So I'll leave the rest of that. I'll do that all at the same time. We'll come back to the ground services menu here. Let's see how the loader is doing. Wrong button. There we go. It's still got a little bit more to load on. Take a look at it from the outside as well. Look how lovely it looks, the new model. So, so nice. Very nice indeed. All right. So, we'll let that carry on doing its thing. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll do some of the uh, MCDU setup. I think we've, we've pretty much caught everything else that we needed to do in the... Initial flows. Ah, okay. So there's a couple of tests we still want to just complete. So we'll do our uh, squib and uh, fire tests for the engines. So we'll do those first. There we go. So that's engine one. And we'll check the squibs as well. That's good. Okay. And then engine two. Hey, Jordan. Welcome to the chat, dude. Hope you're doing well, mate. Good to see you. Um, I'm actually in isolation, dude. So <laughs> I'll be at home mostly. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be having a few beers. Uh, Zach. Well, I'm doing a Microsoft Flight Simulator stream later on this evening. Uh, you're more than welcome to join then. Uh, Yatesy, welcome to the uh, chat. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Good to see you. Happy New Year to you as well, brother. Hope you're doing well. All right, and uh, that test was okay. We'll check the squibs as well there. That's absolutely fine. All right, I think that's the noise of the cargo door getting closed. It is indeed. There she goes. Okay, great stuff. So, let's go ahead and uh, remove the loader. We'll go return. And uh, we'll leave everything else as it is for now. Let's just go around the back here and just check out the cargo. You should be able to see here that it's uh, all on board. There it is. Beautiful. And uh, we can go ahead and close the door here. There she goes. Okay, so nav ADC, we've got a, uh, a warning there. That's easily resolved, however. All right, coming up to top. And uh, now the IRS is aligned, we can actually go ahead and uh, turn the yaw damper pitch trim and the auto thrust system on. That's going to enable our uh, FCU here. 
and uh, we'll go ahead and get that set up. So back to our load sheets. Sorry, back to the takeoff perf. Uh, V2 is 151, so we'll get that set in the speed window here. 151. Uh, initial climb on this uh, departure route is... I think it's... Uh, 5,000 or 6,000. We'll, we'll adjust that once we've uh, done the takeoff briefing. And we'll go ahead and set our flex temperature to 53. So we'll set that here. 53. That's set to flex. Target is 98.3. Uh, okay. Great stuff. And then we'll set our trim here as well before I forget. So 1.2 up on the trim. That should do it. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's go to the MCDU then and uh, we'll get this finished off. So we've got GPS primary, that's perfect. Um, so just checking all the information here against uh, the flight plan. So we've got uh, EGNX to EDDK, which is Cologne Bonn. Alternate is Amsterdam. The cost index is 77. Cruising flight level is 350. And the uh, flight ID, MNB551. This information I am going to trust is correct. Uh, that's straight from Simbrief. So that's fine. We'll go ahead and just check the flight plan here. So EGNX, we're going to use the um, Daventry 3 November departure. Uh, off runway 27, Daventry 3 November there, okay, and we'll go insert, so that's in, that takes us out to Daventry, and then from Daventry we're going to go Mike 605 to Bensu, and then we're going to go Quebec 70 to Biggin Hill, and then Uniform Lima 9 to Conan. In fact, that takes us to Dover, sorry. And then it's uh, Lima 9 to Conan. And then Lima 607 to LNO. Not sure what that full name for that VOR is. And then we've got Mike 170 to Kenham, which is there. And then we've got Tango 862 to Depok. And then we've got our arrival into Cologne. So we'll set that up now. So we're going to use runway 14 left, which is the main runway they use at Cologne Bonn. And uh, we're going to use the Depok 1 Sierra departure, uh, sorry, arrival. And we shouldn't need a transition for that, if I remember correctly. No, I don't believe we do. Okay, fantastic. So we'll uh, obviously check that all once we've done a departure briefing. Uh, we'll click insert. Make sure there's no discontinuities there. Perfect. And we've got the missed approach as well. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead now to the um, init B page. Um, I'm going to leave the radios on automatic tuning for this departure because there is only one VOR which is automatically tuned currently. should be able to see that here. Daventry is here. And I think I can actually hold it if I go like... Let's just go like that. There we go. And we'll leave this side on automatic tuning. So that's fine. We'll then go to our init B page and we'll fill this in, uh, fill this information in. So I'm actually going to pop this MCDU out and come back to the tablet. Just makes it a bit easier. We'll go back to our load sheets and uh, we'll just put in our block fuel, which is actually already here. So we'll go 13.8. Two zero fuel weight one to one point two, and then our CG is to it two six point eight CG in there. Okay, so it gives us an optimum flight level of three three seven. We're on three five zero, so that is fine. We'll need to be an odd flight level going to the east anyway. So uh, three five zero is um, is fine with me. Checking the fuel prediction here, uh, well, the anticipated fuel amounts. Uh, we are going to need more for the taxi out, which is going to be one ton. Trip fuel 
is actually calculated a bit higher than what I uh, what the uh, the flight plan says, which is interesting because the flights that I did, my test flights, it usually calculated trip time uh, trip fuel, which is a bit lower. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. We will just monitor that. Um, but uh, I don't think I don't think it's going to cause us too many issues. Hopefully. Um, our alternate fuel is going to be 3.1 tons. Don't need a slash there. Final reserve 2.2. Uh, root reserve is going to be 1.3. And we'll just put a slash in after that. And that just about works out. 0 0.1 extra. So that's fine. Okay, cool, cool. So that's that set. We'll come back down here and bring this back. Um, so that is pretty much everything done in there. We've just got our takeoff speeds to uh, to stick in here. So we'll come back, go to the takeoff perf, and we can just easily copy that over, send data to FMS like so, and that's all done for us. Receive takeoff company data. So that's all set. Perfect. All right, brilliant. And we've got our thrust reduction acceleration altitude at uh, 1,805, which is 1,500 feet above the aerodrome level. Okay, guys. So we're pretty much there. Let's do our takeoff briefing. Catch up with some of the chat as well before we go any further. Uh, Zach says, let me know on Discord. Uh, Zach, if you just check on the YouTube channel page... The time and everything is, is all on there, dude. Oh, amazing, Jordan. Are you staying in tonight as well? That's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. by all means, uh, come join along. Yeah, that'd be really cool, mate. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Huh. I don't know why I didn't get an alert sound then. That was a bit weird. Anyway, <laughs> NASA, SpaceX, and uh, Roscosmos mission highlights. Uh, thank you for the sub on YouTube. Welcome to the channel. I'll be doing well. Uh, but Zach said uh, he tested positive for COVID. Oh, no, dude. That is very unfortunate, dude. Well, I hope you don't feel too badly anyway, and uh, I, hope you, uh, I hope it passes quickly okay cool so I think we've just got one or two more tests to do that I completely forgot about earlier um, let's see here uh, landing gear warning test we can do that you can see the uh, the light illuminates here we've got landing gear not down and master warnings there so that's fine Coming down here, we can go ahead and put the weather radar to test. And you can see that is, in fact, working there. You get the nice, pretty colors on the um, on the ND. Switch that over to System 2. And that is just working fine there as well. That's fine. We'll turn that off test mode. And we'll turn it off completely. I'm going to put that in WX so that I can just flick it on when I need to. And uh, we come down here and just do a couple more tests before we get underway. So we'll press on our squat code here. We'll set our TCAS to above. We'll turn the traffic display on. And uh, we'll just uh, run this test right here. That's going to test our TCAS system. You can see we've got uh, the indications on the little display here. And the audible warnings as well. It's getting very dark here. It's getting very dark. All right. So we'll do our takeoff briefing here. So we'll go ahead and get the uh, lavatory door closed. Maintain vertical speed. Maintain. Going back to the ground ops, we'll uh, we'll send the air stairs away. Uh, we'll stay on external power for now. But what we will do in the meantime is uh, we'll go ahead and start the APU. So that's APU master and 
APU starter. Uh, we can turn the seatbelt signs on now as we've got the uh, fuel on board. Strobe light on auto. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a departure briefing. So let's go ahead and bring up our charts here. So we'll go EGNX. We'll have a look at the airport charts initially. So we are here on the cargo ramp. Uh, we're on stand 105. And uh, what we'll do is we're taking off runway 27, which is uh, obviously this way. Bearing of 268, which I'll just set here before I forget. Uh, we've got APU running there, and uh, it should be APU avail as well. There we go, APU avail there. Fantastic stuff. Can actually see the voltage fluctuating a little bit there as well, which is quite cool to see. There's so much going on under the hood of this aircraft. It's, it's so cool. Even if you look on the overhead panel here as well, you can kind of see, if you look at the batteries here, you see this green line. This green line, it only actually appears when the battery is charging. Um, so you will occasionally see it go out. Um, obviously, it's not happening now when I'm showing you guys. But uh, yeah, it does occasionally go out when it's fully charged. Usually when you first turn on the aircraft, they don't really come on at all. So that's that. Um Hydraulic accumulator pressure is simulated as well. There's so much simulator in this aircraft. It's just brilliant. I could go on forever. Um, so that's the heading set. Um, so, yeah, we're going to push back facing to the east. We'll taxi Bravo Alpha all the way to Alpha 1, runway 27. And, uh, yeah, we'll take off to the west. The departure route we're going to be doing today is the Daventry... Uh, I forget already daventry uh, 3 november which is this one right here it's fairly straightforward uh, we've got the localized dme we can use as well so we might as well tune that one we can have that tuned no issues 10935 so we actually tune that here that's already tuned indeed so that is fine the uh course for that uh is not actually noted on here let me just see uh, you're only really using it for DME, so I'm not going to even bother with the uh, with the course. So that's fine. Uh, so we're going to depart and uh, take a left turn out to 225. Climb straight ahead at 1 DME. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn the ILS on here. So you can actually see the DME here in the bottom left of the PFD. Right here. So at 1 DME, we take a left turn to 225 at uh, DME... 6.5, turn left again, cross uh, DME 7, IEME, at or above 3000, which is right here. Uh, maximum altitude is flat level 90 there. And uh, out to 31 miles for the Daventry VOR, and then 23 miles. Flight level 90 is required altitude there. Um, and... Yeah, that, that, that's it, pretty much. Obviously, 250 below flight level 100. Transition altitude is 6,000. Con contact London Control after takeoff. Um, now, I don't think London Control is actually on, so I don't know if we need to really worry about that. Nope, they're not, so uh, we don't need to worry too much about that. So that's fine. Great stuff. I'm going to try and use CPDLC if we can on this flight. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to work too well because of the um, lack of controllers, unfortunately. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll set uh, flight level 90 here. Although what we'll do is we'll probably just give ourselves a clearance up to our cruising flight level at some point after departure. Um, just because there's nobody on. So uh, we can probably do that fairly easily we'll arm um, profile and nav mode we'll just swing this out a bit get the airport display under constraints that's fine 
Okay, I think we're pretty much good to go ahead and do our before start checklist. That's our departure briefing done. Let's go ahead and bring up our checklist here. And before I do that, let's just uh, let's just see what's occurring in the chat. Got the noisy APU out here now. Yo, Mariner, how you doing, buddy? Uh, just had a session at Gatwick. We'll join for the return if you're returning. I probably won't be doing the return um, on this one, unfortunately. Uh, but I will be back on later on this evening for sure, man. Oh, you're logged on on ground. Oh, amazing, dude. Amazing. Fantastic. Let's do, let's try. Uh, can we do a bit of CP DLC then? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, cool. Let's try to do CP DLC then. So let's see if uh, if that's going to work. If not, Mariner, just uh, just let us know. But. All right, let's give this a try then, guys. So uh, we want to go to MCDU menu, data link, CPDLC, reports, requests. Uh, NASA, uh, NASA highlights. Welcome to the chat, dude. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you, Matt Doyle. Welcome to the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Good to see you. Um, so let's request a departure clearance. We're going to go E G N X as the ATC facility. Um, the departure is, uh, of course, EGNX, and we'll be going to um, EDDK, which is Cologne Bonn. We're at gate uh, 105. You need a flight plan filed. Oh, okay. I did file one earlier on, but I think maybe, maybe it expired, I guess, because it was a while ago, but let's just uh, refile it. Okay, there we go. Flight plan is filed. Thank you very much for that, Mariner. And uh, we'll go eight. We don't have an ATIS currently, I don't think. Oh, we do. Fantastic. Okay, let's just get that real quick. Thank you, Mariner. Um, so we'll go ACAR ATC, weather request, ATIS, E G N X, send. This ATIS is not available. Interesting. Okay. I can definitely see an ATIS. Let's just try it one more time. No, it doesn't work for some reason. Oh, well, I'll just grab it off uh, VATSIM on X-Pilot. Got information Bravo, so we'll go back here. And we'll bring up the CPDLC. Departure clearance. We'll go for information. Bravo. Unit is still the same. Okay, great. So we'll send our departure clearance. Uh, let's see if this works. Oh, I might need to disconnect. Okay, I'll try that. Is the CPDLC linked to VATSIM? Um, it is and it isn't. It's actually linked to a, a network called Hoppy. And that kind of services both FATSIM and uh, IVAO. Uh, but yes, you can use it to communicate with controls on VATSIM. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I was doing it last night. It was, uh, it's really, really, really nice, actually. Okay, so I'll try send this now. It may, may or may not work. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So I've sent that through, and um, yeah, let's see what happens. Tell you what I will do is I'll, I'll just try send that ATIS one more time. 
because it worked pretty flawlessly last night when I was using uh, using it. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. That's the ATIS. We'll print that off. Still don't have a flight plan. Uh, I've 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 literally just done it. Uh, why is it not working? Free file. Flight plan filed. Enjoy your flights. Oh, I tell you what, uh, it's because I'm on the wrong call sign on, on VATSIM, that's why. There we go. That should be, you should have it now, I think. I was on the wrong call sign, my apologies. <laughs> Okay, cool. So just wait for our clearance. Hopefully the CPDLC worked. Fantastic. Okay, try it again. There we go. Great stuff. Check that that's still current. Information Charlie now. Send that off. Alright, so we should get this light light up once we get our clearance back if it works right call sign on CPDLC uh, it should be MMB 551 is uh, is in that's uh, correct UGNX, maybe I need to just fill this in. Uh, I'll try send it one more time, maybe, after I've done that. Yeah, I can try EGNX across the top as well. Even though this is, we don't actually, we didn't log on last night when we did it last night, did we? Um, so I don't know if it actually makes a difference. Try send it again. I don't think it's working though, is it? I'll just call you on voice if uh, if it's not going to work. All right. We'll do a before start chat list anyway, at least above the line. Okay, so before start, copy prep is complete. Signs are on and auto. Fuel quantity is 13.2 uh, tons. Uh, navigation is checked and set. Landing elevation is 300 feet set. Altimeters are 1013 set, both sides. And the brake anti skid is uh, norm and on right here. Before start above the line complete, and uh, we'll just see if this uh, this clearance situation works. Not sure if it is so. Do 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 do. Try send log on. All right. I will try send the log on. Uh, 
Welcome request sent. Uh, whilst we wait, we'll go ahead and get the ATIS one more time. Send. There we go, we'll print that off. There we go, beautiful. I think we might have to do a voice a voice clearance here. We'll have to talk to someone. QNH is one zero one four now. We get that set. Let's see, is that actually matching in the, in the sim? It is not. We'll keep it on 1013. Like so. Uh, I guess it's not working then. Okay, no worries. I think, yeah, I don't really know, to be honest, mate. I don't really know. Uh, we'll just log off there anyway and just clean it up. Let's get a clearance anyway. First time I spoke to you, Mariner, on the, <laughs> on the radios. Let's go. Uh, am I tuned to the right frequency, though, first? 1219. We are indeed. Okay. East Midlands Ground, uh, very good afternoon, sir. Black C551 Heavy, stand 105, type A306. Information Charlie, QNH1014, request clearance to Cologne Bonn. One very good afternoon to you as well, sir. Uh, clear to Cologne, Bonn, and Daventry 3, November departure, and Squawk 0471. Clear to Cologne, Bonn, Daventry 3, November departure, Squawk 0471, Black Sea 551 Heavy. And Black Sea 551 Heavy, Reback is correct, report ready for push and start. Okay, fantastic. There we go. Thank you very much, Mariner. <laughs> amazing, amazing. All right, cool, cool. So we'll go ahead and get the uh, pushback tug. We'll get him uh, connected first of all. Uh, we've got our APU running now. APU is available. We'll, we'll go ahead and get the APU bleed on. Turn the external power off. We'll go ahead and disconnect the external power and remove the chocks. We'll go ahead and connect the pushback tug. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the beacon light on. We'll return to our checklists. So before start, checklist below the line. Uh, windows and doors are closed both sides. Just check on, on this side as well. All looking good. Beacon light is on. Parking brake is on before start checklist completes. Black C551 heavy stand 105 ready for push and start. Um, Black C551 stand 105 push and start approved face east. Push and start approved face east. Black C551 heavy. All right, cool, cool. So pushing back facing to the east. Uh, this guy is connecting, so we'll go ahead and tell him what to do. Ground the cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. 
So we're going to face to the east, which is this way. And Ryanair 1525, readability 5. Thank you. Uh, oh, I did this last night. I pushed back. <laughs> pushed back not onto the taxiway. So we'll go right about here. All right. Cool, cool. Got our beacon light on. Beautiful. Release the parking brake. And off we go. Off we go, guys. <laughs> this controller is a cool dude. Sure is. We'll start our timer there. Okay, let's go ahead and set our engine start to ignition on the A side. As you notice there, the uh, packs will get shut off automatically. And we'll go for start on engine 2 to begin with. Josh, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Let's see. 20% and 2 here, and we'll start the fuel flow. There we go. can actually see the ailerons moving back into, well, into position here as the hydraulics come alive, which is pretty cool. No worries at all, Mariner. No worries at all. If you've got to go, you got to go. No worries. No worries. Okie dokie. That engine has stabilized, as you can see, all looking good there. Let's go for a start on engine number one. Arm the starter there. And we'll take a look down here. Waiting for 20% on the N2 here. And we'll start the fuel flow here. I'm just using my uh, TCA controller to do that. This is an Airbus after all. Even though it has a yoke. <laughs> All right, coming up to 20% on the N2. Start the fuel flow. Rise in EGT. Beautiful. Parking brake is set. You can see the accumulator moving there when you set the parking brake. There we go. EGT is is uh, is cooling off, uh, so the engine is stabilizing, and we are looking good. Great stuff. Beautiful. They stabilize very quickly. These engines, very cool. Even though, um, yeah, they seem to be very slow to react in in most other scenarios. All right, we'll get the transponder to alt off and uh, we'll go ahead and do our after start checklist. So after start, pitch trim is set. Uh, we already set that. Rudder trim is zero. Spoilers are not armed, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Arm them there, that right there. That's good. That's some flaps we can set to 15, 15. Ecam status. Is checked and normal. Anti ice is not required, and the hand signal should be somewhere on the right, he said. Here he comes. West Midland Ground. This is KLM 589 and uh, runway 27 vacated. There we go. Hand signal received. Fantastic. So after start checklist is complete. Just going to turn the radios down a touch. There we go. 
Perfect. And just before we set off here, I just want to just double check on my settings here. There should be a nose wheel steering disconnect button. At C1, that's what I want it set to. Let me just see if I can find this one. Um, okay, I'm not sure if that one's going to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll try it. I'll try it. Let's see if it works. All right, cool. So after start checklist is complete. All right. Black C551 heavy, ready for taxi. And Black C551 taxi, Bravo, and hold short, Bravo. Taxi Bravo, hold short, Bravo, Black C551. Okay, cool. So we're on Bravo currently, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so we're on Bravo, so hold short on this uh, Bravo holding point here. So let's release the parking brake. A little bit of breakaway thrust. Is that an MD-80 over there? Oh, beautiful it is. The mad dog himself. Although it's got a KLM call sign and a American livery, which is uh, quite unfortunate. We've got a Ryanair over there, which is obviously correctly matched, which is fantastic. And uh, we are moving. Beautiful stuff. I'm going to turn the dome light off. It is a bit bright. And Ryanair 9 Echo. Uh, Josh asks, let's see. Uh, is there any software to get this pushback system for Microsoft Flight Simulator? There isn't, unfortunately, at the moment. There isn't, unfortunately. I really wish there was, but uh, there just isn't, I'm afraid. Right here, uh, KLM 589, uh, no worries at all, Zach. No worries at all. Yep, still haven't left the ground. Good observation there. Police car going past over there. Oh, baby, what is he doing? Once the KLM MD80 passes from your right to left on Alpha, continue taxi. Stand one seven via Alpha, Quebec, and Charlie Alpha. After KLM, continue. Zach, are you seriously inviting me? You can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Come on, dude. And right in nine, okay, Delta is stand one seven via Alpha, Quebec, and Charlie Alpha. All right, so we don't need the APU anymore, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. APU bleed off, APU master off. We'll put the ignition back to uh, off as well. That's going to bring the packs on. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn econ flow on because we don't need the full packs. Uh, we'll turn the taxi lights on as well before I forget. And Black C551, continue taxi now. Bravo, Juliet. Alpha holding point Alpha 1 runway 27. Continue taxi Bravo Juliet and Alpha to Alpha 1 runway 27 Black C551. And all stations, all stations, East Midlands ground is now closing. Monitor Unicom 122 to Smite. Have a happy new year. Thank you, sir. Happy new year. Have a happy new year to KLM uh, 589. Thank you very much for the ADATV, sir. <laughs> Everyone tuning in at once. All right, cool. So to Unicorn. And we're going to taxi on as uh, as expected, basically. Nice and simple. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So a left turn here and then a right turn immediately and straight down to the runway holding point. Uh, when we get around this corner, we'll do a flight controls check. So let's just bring that up. to slow down a little bit for this corner here so on to the brakes
Taking it a little bit wide in this uh, aircraft because it is quite a large aircraft. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so flight controls check. We'll do that now. So full left on the ailerons, full right, and neutral. Full up on the elevator and full down and neutral. And then the rudder, this is the, ch this is the test here for the nose wheel steering disconnect. I don't think it's going to work, is it? So full left on the rudder. Oh, it does work. Okay, fantastic. And then full right. And then neutral. Great stuff. Okay. Fantastic. Make sure we're staying on the taxiway here. All right. Great stuff. Cool, cool, cool. So quick uh, departure briefing again. So we're going to take a left turn at 1DME from the localizer, uh, which we have showing here. Uh, then we're going to continue out to 6.5 miles, start taking a left turn. At 7 miles, we want to be above 3,000 and below flight level 90, and then out to 31 miles. Daventry, above 5,500, below flight level 90, and then required altitude at 23 miles from Daventry at flight level 90, and then out to the Daventry VOR. Okay, so we'll do a before takeoff checklist as well. So before takeoff, flight controls are checked. Let's just zoom out like that so we can actually see where we're going while we do this. So flight controls are checked. Briefing is confirmed. Slats and flaps, we can actually just double check that. So 15-15. 15-15 is set and um, okay. Uh, performance FMS is checked and read. Takeoff config is checked. Uh, transponder is set. <clears throat> we'll actually switch that to TARA momentarily. And that is before takeoff above the line complete. Uh, we'll finish the rest off once we get a bit closer to the runway. It's got an old Thomas Cook 320 there. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Chester, good afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I do love the night lighting in X-Play, and I'm kind of glad it's getting dark, actually, because the night lighting is just so good. Absolute beautiful aircraft is the A300. I absolutely love it. It looks so good. Look at that shine as well off the fuselage. Beautiful. Look at the steam coming out of the uh, <laughs> out of the chimneys in the back. Yeah, I love it. I love the way it looks. It just looks like it means business, if you know what I mean. Tell you what we haven't done though is if I jump back here is I don't think we turned this light off here. Yeah, there we go. That's better. All right, seat belts are on. Fantastic. Let's give a little ping of the no smoking sign so they know in the back we're about to take off. Okay, so approaching the runway, let's go ahead and get the weather radar on. We'll put our transponder to TARA. I'm going to turn this volume up a touch there. Uh, 
I think we are all set. So before takeoff below the line, so cabin is secure. TCAS is T-A-R-A. -A. Packs are on. Ignition is normal. Anti-ice is off. Before takeoff checklist is complete. East Midlands traffic, Black Sea 551 heavy, uh, lining up runway 27, East Midlands traffic. Bon voyage, sir, and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you too, sir. Yowza. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to line up on the runway. We'll get strobe lights on now. Uh, we'll get our takeoff lights on the nose and the landing lights on as well. Slow down a bit for this turn here. Here she comes. Gotta love the lighting in X-Plane. I'm just guessing the turn here. Not bad, actually. Not bad. All right, here we go, guys. We're just gonna, we're just gonna get cracking straight up. All right, so we'll go to about forty percent on the N one. Fifty percent, even. Wait for the EGT to drop a little bit. Okay, that's still not simulated, and then we'll go to Toga Power. Okay, so Toga, we've got Thrust, SRS, Runway. Eighty knots. They got Thrust set. A little bit of wind from the right to contend with here on takeoff roll. V1 and rotate. Okay, positive rates. Gear up. Definitely need to get a bit of trim in here. Okay, so acceleration altitude, you can hear the thrust winding back to climb thrust. Okay, climb thrust is set. We are accelerating. Nose is coming down. Okay, AP1 on and uh, S speed. So we'll retract the flaps here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear us up to our cruising flight level, which is 350 here. So we'll set that. And we are accelerating. Uh, because we've cleared ourselves up to a flight level, we'll go ahead and go straight to standard pressure as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and disarm the ground spoilers as well whilst we're at it. Speed is increasing nicely to 250 knots here. And uh, we've taken that slight left turn out to 225 currently. And uh, we're about to take another left turn momentarily. Uh, we've got P thrust, P climb and nav. Everything is looking good there. We'll go ahead and clear off these DHs. And uh, we'll... Leave the ILS indications on for now. We just need that for this turn. Traffic to the kilo, top of uh, descent, aim to Alpha, uh, leaving flight level 180 inbound.
Fantastic seeds. All right, we'll clear off the ILS indications now. Passing through 6,000 feet. And uh, we'll do after takeoff checklist. So, sats and flaps are retracted. Landing gear is up and neutral. I always forget to do that in this aircraft. So, we'll put that back to neutral. And packs are on. Altimeters are set to standard both sides. After takeoff checklist complete. All right, so we're up and away. We're up and away. Let's go ahead and do that right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Manchester traffic, Ryanair 98, Hotel Mike, Sunday 2 Alpha for Manchester currently. Oh, we do have an aircraft showing just behind us there on the TCAS. Beautiful thing about this aircraft is you can actually control the volume of the radios with this volume knob that's in the aircraft, which is just brilliant, to be honest. All right, so about to pass through 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and get the nose lights, landing lights off, and the runway turnoff lights off. Nose is coming down for the acceleration out to 325 knots, which is our climb speed. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn the seatbelt signs off now as well. Great stuff. We're looking good. Beautiful. All right, fantastic. Nice little takeoff there, nice little departure. I think that was that was fairly decent. Um, yeah. This uh, this aircraft seems to be it's it's always feels very heavy to control, so it always wants to. I feel like the takeoff um, trim always seems to be maybe a little bit too um, too much down nose down. I think I'm not sure. Oh, nice, Zach. Whereabouts are you flying, dude? Oh, Orlando to the Bahamas. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I bet that's quite some uh, some nice views there. Nice blue waters and that. Am I planning on drinking and flying tonight? Um, yes, I will be having a few beers, dude. Yeah, definitely will be. Definitely will be. Excuse me. Uh, well, Zach will be doing a stream, dude. So, um, yeah, I mean, anyone that joins along. Bryce, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. I'm not sure which company you're talking about. You're talking about um, Honeycomb or something like that, maybe? I don't know. But uh, I wouldn't let it worry you, dude. There's no point in getting um, getting so wound up about, you know, something such as uh, which you're doing for for a bit of fun. Um, obviously, there's lots of hardware delays in the world all all over at the moment. So I suppose there's only so much you can really do. Cough, cough, Ryanair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, tonight what I was thinking of doing is uh, we're going to do sort of a, a bit of a VFR, um, night VFR 
trip. Um, and um, yeah, it should be pretty cool. We're going to go across the UK, I think, and um, basically just see if we can find the fireworks. I think what I'll try and do is make a route that sort of starts somewhere and then and then probably follows a motorway, something quite easy. And then ends up in London at midnight, which uh, should be quite cool. See the fireworks going. Um, if you check out the uh, the YouTube event for the stream tonight, um, there's an add-on you can download, which has got all the... Um, well, it, it basically puts fireworks into Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is really cool. Um, so, yeah, that should be pretty, pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think not going to do it like super realistic. Obviously, you know, in real life, you can't really just fly through the center of London without any uh, clearance. Uh, we're not going to really be bothering with that too much. Uh, we're just going to uh, do a bit of a VFR and assume we're cleared into all airspace and uh, just, just have a bit of fun and, ch and, and chill out really, I think. So it should be good. Should be good. I think, as you guys know, if you've ever, if you've ever watched one of my streams before, where I've I've had a beer or two, you guys know I'll probably be uh, I'll probably struggle to uh, find the correct air spaces and whatnot. Anyway. <laughs> This beautiful aircraft. Absolute stunner. Love the way the A300 looks. So cool. All right. So we're doing well here. Uh, we're at flight level 235. Yeah, everything is looking beautiful. ETA at destination. Uh, we're currently using live weather and time. 16.39 Zulu, so just under an hour. Uh, I've got a bit of a tailwind as well currently, so that should uh, maybe increase that uh, a bit once we get uh, around this bend. Well, I say increase, should uh, reduce that time maybe a, a teeny touch. And uh, we shall, we shall see. Unfortunately, no no center control is on at the moment. But uh, we'll see what happens. I am just going to step away for a second. Just need to uh, nip away for one minute. And I'll be, uh, I'll be back with you guys. We're back. Am I still muted? No, I'm not. I never muted my microphone in the first place. Does that button not work anymore? It doesn't. All right. All right. How are we doing, chat? How are we doing? Uh, on Discord, Zach, I don't know yet. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Depends. Depends if there's a lot of people or not. I don't tend to do a lot of flights where I'm just sat on Discord uh, when I'm streaming. 
Just purely for the fact that obviously I'm talking to chat probably about 70% of the time. So it's just a bit, um, it can be a bit difficult to com communicate with someone on Discord at the same time when you're trying to talk about what you're doing. So we'll see. Uh, Rose Jackson, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, you managed to get uh, Captain Joe's book in the end. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I've not read a ton of it yet, but what I have read is uh, is pretty cool. So yeah, yeah, really, really good. Thank you very much, Rose. Thank you, and you too. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year indeed. Here we are. There's Heathrow below us. Yeah, I really hope in X-Plane 12 it sorts out the, the lighting a bit because although the night lighting is really good in this sim, like, look at the contrast. It's just too much. <laughs> Like, it's pitch black on this side, and then really, really bright on this side. It's just not great, is it? You can see all the traffic on the road below. I love how you can see that and make it out in X-Play, and it's so, so cool. He throw all the way down there. Beautiful. The thing I don't like about Explain is the overpower haze and mist. Yeah, it is. It does have that very sort of hazy look to it, doesn't it? Um, if you get this uh, this this add-on, however, um, this add-on called Enhanced Skyscapes, that um, that does actually help quite a lot with the haze and mist, and it and it does look quite a bit more punchy and contrasty. Um, as you can see, it is far more contrasty, um, but that has the drawback whereby, you know, obviously the sim isn't natively sort of made for having this kind of change made to it i suppose so it does result in some of the undesirable effects but it's i think it's definitely better than the default i think and the clouds obviously look a ton better even though they're constantly changing <laughs> we've got uh what is that is that the emirates stadium down there Have I tried X Enviro? I haven't. No, actually, no. Um, yeah, yeah, it didn't really bother me too much, to be honest. X Enviro. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff it does is very similar to what this enhanced like, skyscapes does. I think. I'm not that clued up on X Enviro, to be honest. But um, when I did, a, I had a bit of a read about it, and it, it didn't really seem to. Uh, sound that interesting to me to be quite honest so i kind of just gave it a miss all right so we're climbing out nicely here flight level 300 top of climb is uh indicated at uh about conan um yep yeah, so Top climb is just after Conan here. And then we don't have too much of a cruise. About 80 miles or so until we start our descent down into Cologne. Hopefully a controller comes on or something. I'm desperate to try out the CPDLC to show you guys. <laughs> I was um I was playing with it last night and I did this same flight actually 
and uh, it worked really, really well. It was so cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's really, really nice just to be able to sort of send and receive your ATC on on this little box here because, you know, I mean, that's, it's, it'd be really good for streaming because <laughs> obviously sometimes uh, I end up... Oh, the lavatory door is open. Who did that? Um, it's really good for streaming because you can, uh, you know, uh, when you're streaming and talking, sometimes you end up missing certain transmissions so uh yeah i imagine it'd be really nifty for that and look at the detail on the screens here which i absolutely love you've got the uh fingerprints and the dust prints that only really show up when there's uh, sunlight on there which is super super cool you can see there's like a curvature to these crt displays as well 3d instruments all over the place really really nicely done cockpit this which reminds me, someone wanted to know if, I think it was Nephelius, wanted to know if the the toilet flushes in the lavatory. Let's, let's give it a try, shall we? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> Does the tap work? The taps do not work, unfortunately. And, um, oh... There's a bit of wall missing as well from the inside. You definitely can't see that from the outside. Interesting. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Got our cargo in the back there. Take a little peek out the window here. Yeah, another thing that mystifies me about X-Play and lighting is... You see how the light is coming from the right-hand side here? For some reason, this door is illuminated when, obviously, it really shouldn't be. Which is a bit strange. I don't know if that's an X-Play thing or a uh, A300 thing, to be honest, actually. Okay, so climb rate has slowed down pretty... Uh, Pretty drastically here as you get to the higher flight levels. Only doing about 500 feet per minute at the moment, which is fine. We shall get there, but uh, yeah, this thing climbs like a rocket initially, and then it, it really kind of levels off. But um, we're doing pretty well. We've got a nice ground speed of 522 knots at the moment. We've got a, a pretty strong tailwind component. So we're doing well. Let's see if that's actually improved our ETA. Not just yet. Do we have wind data for the every waypoint? We actually do, which is fantastic. Let's see if that is actually matching up. 291 degrees at 59. Uh, so it's not really matching up exactly. But uh, never mind. Never mind, that's fine with me. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now, we've got some symbols here on the ND that I've never seen before, I don't think. We've got this magenta triangle and there's a very, very faint magenta diamond there. Now I'm pretty sure this 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 triangle I think it means that you 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 have to fly over that waypoint potentially might be wrong about that but I'm not sure exactly why they're showing up to be honest but what have I got selected up here I've got my constraints on yeah I'll need to look that one up
Yeah, Rose, it would have been cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> a nice little detail. Uh, I love the little details that, that aircraft manufacturers put in. I'd really like to see someone make a, well, make these windows open, actually. I think uh, Mariner said, mentioned to me last night he's been flying the Flight Factor 320, and the window's open in that. Oh, we do actually have a center controller on now. Fantastic. Uh, 131 decimal 1. Great stuff. Okay, now I've just realized I didn't actually put my squawk code in earlier on, so let's just do that before this controller tells us off. Uh, okay, so 131 decimal 1. And uh, it's Brussels Control. So hopefully we can get, get the CPDLC with this uh, with this guy. Look at the shine here. Brussels Control, very good afternoon. Black Sea 351 Heavy, flight level 336, climbing flight level 350, inbound uh, Conan. Black Sea 551 Brussels, good afternoon, 975, level 350, nine, Climb flight level 350. Say again the uh, waypoint, Black Sea 551. Black Sea 551, Podat, Opa, Oscar, Delta, Alpha, Tego. Roger, direct Podat, Black Sea 551 Heavy. All right, direct to Podat, we'll insert. And we've got a very nice direct there. Taking us, uh, yeah, more or less straight over to our approach, which is uh, pretty, pretty nice. Uh, what we'll do as well is we'll go ahead and see if this controller can accept CPDLC. Okay, so the call sign is EBBW. So we'll go here and see if we can log on to uh, CPDLC. EBBW. Like so, and we'll send log on, and we shall see if that works this time. Uh, Labat Sports, welcome to the chat on YouTube. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Oh, there we go. Beautiful ATC message there. So we'll clear that off and come down here. Log on accepted. Log on accepted. Fantastic. So there we go. We're logged on now to CPDLC. And uh, if the controller needs to give us any instruction, he can send us it on here. So we won't have to actually speak to him anymore. There we go. We've got another one. And that's just confirming current ATC unit, EBBW Brussels. So that's fine with me. Don't need to respond to those. It's just uh, purely informational. Um, but that's that. So I'm going to turn this down a bit now. Great stuff. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, we've got no nav aid displayed. That's fine. It's just because we're crossing the English Channel. There's no VORs to um, to tune. So that's no issues. Um, so Labat Sports said, uh, can you fly the 737? Uh, yes, I I don't know if that's a question of asking me, asking me if I physically can do it. Um, yeah, we've definitely flown the 737 a few times on stream. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love the 737. But... Um, if you wanted me to fly it right now, um, obviously we're in the middle of a flight, so I uh, can't just uh, change aircraft, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, potentially in a future stream, we'll be flying the 737 again for sure. Okay, so uh, we're at our cruising flight level of 350 here. So we'll go ahead and put our uh, traffic display to below. So that is set and uh, we can go ahead and just do a quick review of our systems here. So bringing up the ECAM, I'm going to bring it up here so it's a bit easier for us to see. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, cycle through these here. So Okay, so engine engines are all looking fine. 
Hydraulics, all powered and fine. You can see there's a slight difference in the uh, the PSI, um, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, Any builds have basically modeled a few of the systems here to have a little bit of variance, I believe. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, realistic, which is very cool. AC electrics, as you can see, both generators supplied by the IDGs, which is fine. Both buses supplied by the generators, that's fine. All looking good. You can see the voltage fluctuating very slightly there as well. DC electrical. Again, all looking fine and normal. Bleeder. All looking very good there. Air conditioning is 24 degrees throughout, which is uh, fine with me. Pressurization is all looking good. Cabin altitude 6,735 feet. Uh, altitude is still climbing slightly though, which uh, again, absolutely fine. Fuel is uh, looking fine. 9.2 tons. APU is off. Flight controls are all fine and green. That's all good. All the doors are closed. Slides are armed at the front there. And uh, the wheel uh, wheel page, all the wheel and um, brake temperatures are looking fine. And uh, spoilers are down. Great stuff. All looking fantastic. Uh, Rose says, I love the 350 in X-Plane. Yeah, I've not tried that myself, but it does look, it does look very good. It does look very good. That's a flight factor, I believe, isn't it? Oh, it's getting very moody in the cockpit here. Very moody. Very dark outside. Obviously crossing the channel currently, so, um, yeah, not much to see by the way of lights. Or anything at all, really. Oh, no, you can actually see a road there. We must be over the channel. I think this is the coast right here. That must be Calais, I think, maybe. Uh, Alexandra, welcome to the chat. Or should I say uh, bonjour? Welcome. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. And uh, Ophelia says, on the topic of systems modeling, is the Hot Start Challenger 650 on my radar um, it's uh, not really, no, to be honest with you. I've not really thought about it. I think that's, is that an X-Plane aircraft? Uh, flight factor 350, yep, that's it, that's it. Oh, you got explained just for that. That's amazing, dude. That's amazing. I'll have to look into that if it's going to be a bit more of an in-depth aircraft. I, I I saw it, I think, pop up on FS Elite, but I didn't really look into it too much. Um, mainly because I um, mainly because I don't want to invest a ton into x -Plane at the moment. I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens once uh, x -Plane 12 comes out before I actually invest uh, too much more in this sim. Out on the seventh. Oh wow! Wow. I'll uh, yeah. I'll have to look that up for sure. Okay, so we're going to be with Brussels Control basically until we leave uh, Belgium airspace, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll already be on our descent at that point. Uh, and then into uh, Cologne Bonn. Unfortunately, there's no controllers on at uh, Cologne, um, but that's fine. We should get a few of our descent clearances from this controller on CPDLC, which uh, looking forward to. I'm um, going to go ahead and turn the uh, dome light on a bit here because it is getting a bit dark. That 
That should do it. That should do it. Right. We're actually approaching our top of descent in about uh, 60 miles or so. Not 60 miles, sorry. 70 miles. So we should expect to see this uh, little button right here light up fairly soon. And uh, we should get a descent clearance. So we'll look out for that. I love this aircraft, how it has. <laughs> it's got the digital displays, but it also has the same information all on backups, analogs. Because if you watch the um, tutorial videos for this aircraft, the um, guys at Anybuilds, they kind of go into the fact that um, when this aircraft was um, first sort of manufactured, it was kind of the time where they were sort of, they were switching over from... Look at that little tiny cloud right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, what is that? What is that? Is that... What is that? Is that another aircraft or a cloud? What is that? Anyway, so when this aircraft was first manufactured, it was... Um, in a sort of an age when they were sort of switching from digital to, from from analog systems over to digital and uh, as a result they kind of put in all the digital stuff but they also have all of the analog stuff as a backup just in case because nobody really trusted the digital systems fully back then like we do today so um yeah it's quite cool how they've got everything uh sort of duplicated if you like and to be honest Especially for the engine instrumentation, I tend to use that more than the um, the ECAM. There we go, ATC message. You can see the little lights come up. We heard the ringing. Coming down here, company message received. We've got uh, descent clearance, descent to flight level 250 here. And what we need to do is we're going to need to go Wilco and send. Then we'll come back up here, wind this down to 250. And we'll start our descent. So we've got retard, PDES, NAV. And we are going to start our descent. The engines are rolling back, as you can see. UFO, you think, guys? Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> it must have been a UFO. Let's close the door now. We're on the descent, not the lavatory door. Close this door right here. All right, so we're going to start our descent. We're using profile mode. Um, obviously, we started our descent before our top of descent, so I'm intrigued to see what kind of uh, descent it, tr it decides to do here. Uh, I wonder if it's just going to do a nice, gentle descent until it recaptures the profile. Yeah, it is doing quite a gentle descent, a thousand feet per minute. We've got our intercept point here. I do need to listen to the radios though somewhat because my handover will happen most likely on um, voice. All right. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Patrick. Hope you're doing well, mate. Good to see you. My car has all sorts of gadgets. I don't trust any of them. <laughs> Fair play, dude. Oh, look at that. Another aircraft there on TCAS. Let's see if we can see him. Straight across to our left. Is that him that, there? No, that's a star. No, I don't see them anywhere, unfortunately. They're way past us now. I feel like an X-plane, it can be quite difficult. Oh, there he is. Yeah, it's quite difficult to see aircraft from far away. Oh, he's disappeared. I'm not sure where he's gone now. 
Yeah, it seems quite difficult to see aircraft from far away. You should be able to see the nav lights quite clearly, I think, but it just doesn't tend to happen that way. Um, but yeah, Patrick, yeah, I mean, fair play, fair play. I bet in your car you don't have all the analog backups, though, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, we've got the center tank feeding there. Let's just go ahead and check the fuel page real quick. Okay, so it's actually topping up the center tank from the trim tank on the rear of the aircraft. So there's a, a trim tank in the tail section. And it's actually transferring that forwards to maintain the CG here. So that is also fine. And the e cam has disappeared now, so I assume it's going to stop any second. All right, great stuff. We are descending down nice and slowly here. No issues at all. Uh, Dave asks, do I have uh, NVIDIA? Yes, I do, Dave. Yeah, I've got an NVIDIA uh, 3080 graphics card. Yeah. Uh, Nigel, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well, mate. And uh, yeah, happy new year to you as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much. MSFS, on the other hand, tends to way overdo the nav lights. Yeah, it does really, doesn't it? But uh, at least you can actually see the aircraft. There we go. Just got another ATC message here. Let's come down and descend to flight level 170. Wilco, send. Clear off that. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. 170 is uh, blue. Uh, have I seen the GeForce performance monitoring? Yes, I have. Yep. Yep, I've used that a few times with Alt and R. Bye -bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, it doesn't seem to work with all the games I use, though, which is strange, but it is what it is. All right. Let's do a... <coughs> Excuse me. Let's do an approach briefing. So let's close off these charts here. We're going to go EDDK and uh, let's bring up the... Uh, Arrival procedure, uh, which is going to be the Depok One Sierra, I believe. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So fairly straightforward. Obviously, we've got this big roundabout route here. Now, um, might not might, might not be necessarily um, necessary to fly all that. Obviously. In a normal scenario, you would probably get direct to the final fix here if there's not much traffic. So we might just we might do that. We'll see how we're doing on the descent. Um, so that's fine. So we're going to come in via Depok and then basically follow down to all these Arna fixes. Minimum altitude is three thousand uh, at Legdu. We've got 5,000 minimum here, 4,000 minimum here, 3,000 minimum here, all the way around, uh, which is fine. We'll just double check they are all in there. So, yeah, our anticipated altitudes are much higher. And then we've got leg do plus 3,000. So that's in there and that's all fine. So that's good. We've then got the ILS in there as well, which we'll have a look at now. So our uh, final approach is going to be ILS 14 left. Uh, thank you very much for the follow Pompey Chime on uh, Twitch. Hope you're well and having a fantastic uh, day. Welcome to the stream. For some reason, I'm not getting the sounds today from the alerts. I don't know why that is. I think that happened last time actually as well, didn't it? Very strange. 
Um, Chester as well, thank you very much for the 50 stars. Much appreciated. That's very kind of you, dude. Uh, again, I'm not getting the alert sounds for some reason, so I do apologize that I'm not reading things out. But it's not because I'm being ignorant. It's just because I'm not getting the alert sounds, so I, I don't actually hear that, that something's happened, unfortunately. All right, so ILS uh, for Cologne Bonn. Germany is going to be ILS 1 for left. Um, ILS frequency 110.9. Identifier India Kilo Echo Sierra. Inbound course is 136. So we'll make sure that's set. 110.9. And the inbound course is going to be 136. There we go. Great stuff. So leg do, we need to be at 3,000 feet. That is when we are going to descend on down the glide slope. Um, leg do also being our final approach point. Descent angle is 3 degrees and the minimums are going to be... We're going to use a DH of 200 in this. 1228 for Black Sea, 551 Heavy. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. All right, there we go. So I missed his uh, transmission there. He's logged us off. That's absolutely fine. Great stuff. Okay, so we're back to Unicom now for the rest of the arrival. So I'll switch back over there like so. How are we doing on the descent? We're doing fine. We're just a little bit below our profile. And uh, looks like we're going to recapture that uh, any second now. Um, so, continue on with the brief here. Three degree glide slope and a DH of 200. Like I say, we're going to use a DH because that's what this aircraft uses. It is an old aircraft, remember? They used to use DH uh, well before MDA. So, we'll go for 200 there. That is set both sides. And that's about it, really. It's fairly straightforward ILS. Um, airport elevation is, uh, or runway elevation is 230. So we'll go ahead and set that right there. And the um, missed approach procedure is climb straight ahead to 3,000 feet. Um, and then when passing DME 2.8, Cologne Bomb VOR, or 2000, whichever is later, then turn left to the Whipper VOR. So basically straight out and a left turn out there so that's fine um what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to clear myself down to 3,000 feet here because we are on unicorn now so we'll do that we'll set auto in fact we'll, we'll not set our auto brake now we are going to do a uh landing performance calculation in just a second here um what uh what, what else did i want to do here okay so i wanted to just come to the progress page and what we're going to do is we're going to go for uh, Kilo Bravo Oscar here in here. And uh, we're going to get put WYP. These are the two VORs involved in our go around procedure. So we'll keep them to tune there just for reference. And you should be able to see, there we go, the needles pointing at them there as well as the DME information. Uh, so that's our approach. Then we'll go ahead and have a look at the airport chart. Um, so we're going to come in runway 1 for left, uh, which is uh, 12,516 feet or 3,815 3, meters long. It's the longest runway at Cologne Bonn. And um, we're going to come in on run 1 for left. We'll probably leave here at Alpha 2, uh, which is a high speed exit. We'll take a, uh, a right turn onto Alpha. Taxi on straight up Alpha base at the cross runway uh, 24, and then we shall uh, taxi on to the stands here. We're going to go for stand uh, Echo 33, I believe, is uh, the one I wanted. So let's have a look. We want parking stands continued here. So, yep, yeah, Echo 33 right here on the uh, cargo apron. And it's pretty straightforward taxi in, really. I don't think there's a controller on there, so we won't have any ground control, but uh, we shall certainly uh, do what we need to do ourselves. Okie dokie. So we're coming in now to Depok. We're actually taking a left turn here. The uh, aircraft... Uh, 
Uh, nicely sort of predicting the, the turn there. Maybe a little bit... Um, a little bit... Uh, of a inside turn there. I'm not sure what to uh, to call it. I think it's cut off the corner maybe a little bit too much there, but it seems okay, I think. <laughs> cool. Okay, so for some reason, our VDEV scale just shot from top to bottom there. Um, so let's see if we can resolve that. We're actually a little bit high, but we are catching the profile here. You can see plus 1380. That is uh, in feet above our calculated profile. Um, and we are catching it back up, so we're not going to need to add any additional drag. So we'll just leave it at that for now. And I think what we'll do is we'll just we'll just fly this full procedure here, um, because we are still at uh, eighteen thousand feet. We've still got a lot of altitude to lose before we uh, we can actually uh, establish on the ILS. So speaking of which, let's bring up the ILS here on the PFD. Um, it's not identified quite just yet. It's actually surprising because we're currently actually fairly close to the uh, to the airfield, to be quite honest. Yeah, we're just passing it on our right here, so let's see. Can we see it out the window? Yes, we can. Just down there. There's Cologne Bonn. Airport, there's 14 left. Uh, but uh, no worries there. No worries at all. Um, so let's do our landing calculations. We've done our briefing. It's so a landing perf. Uh, we'll get uh, EDDK in on the top left. We'll go 14 left and we'll go for an 80s request. Yo, Lando, thank you very much for the raid on Twitch. Much appreciated, dude. I hope you had a fantastic stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And again, sorry I can't hear the alerts. Um, it just happened to be that I looked over at that time. <laughs> uh, but that's amazing, dude. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> DA, thank you. Yeah, landing in your hometown. That's amazing, dude. You're from uh, Cologne. Lovely stuff. Okay, so... Um, we've got our ATIS information in. We'll bring in our landing weight, uh, 127.9 tons. We're going to land on uh, flaps 30, 40 degrees, which is going to be full flaps. Uh, auto brake low and uh, reverse idle. Um, uh, we can actually go for reverse full. Uh, it's still only uh, 20 past 4 in the afternoon. Um, although it's a little bit later here in Germany, so... Either way, I don't necessarily think we need uh, noise abatement in, uh, in in force here. So that's fine. Let's do compute. And see what it spits out. All right. So VAP is 134. VREF 129. And uh, we've got a stop margin of 1805 meters, which is uh, fine, really. Okay, great stuff. So we're going to go for a low auto brake, and we'll go to our takeoff approach page, make sure everything is in here correctly. So uh, VAP was, wants to be uh, 134. So we'll stick that in there. Hello? Interesting. Doesn't want them to let me change that for some reason. Okay, fair enough. I guess that is independent, maybe, of the um, calculator here. Um, nevertheless, that's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, check the wind here. So we've got winds 320 at 2 knots. So very, very light winds here. Um, and to be fair, they would probably be... I would imagine they're probably using a different runway with this wind, to be quite honest. I sh should have probably checked the weather a little bit earlier here, but uh, thankfully there's no controllers on. And uh, let's see. Yeah, they would probably use 3-2 right, wouldn't they? But uh, it's only two knots, so we can land with that as a tailwind. Uh, no issues at all there. 
Okie dokie. So, approach checklist. Uh, actually, Q and H will set that. This will clear down to an altitude. So, we'll go 1019er. One zero one nine is set, both sides and on the standby. Cool. So approach checklist now. Finally. Uh, okay. So we're coming up to ten thousand feet as well. Let's get the lights on as normal. Seatbelt signs can come on as well. So approach checklist signs are set. Briefing is confirmed. Ecam status is. Checked non and normal. Altimeters are set uh, to 1019. Both sides. Minimums are set to 200 feet. Uh, DH, both sides. Ignition is normal. Landing elevation is set to 250. Approach checklist complete. Okay, so we are a bit high here. You can see it's flashing up more drag. So let's go ahead and get some speed brake. Let's see how high we are, in fact. Only 800 feet, so we shouldn't be too much, shouldn't have too much to worry about there. Let's go ahead and bring up, oh, we've already brought up the ILS display. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, we'll close the status page. Alright, beautiful. I will catch up with the chat momentarily, guys, just, uh, just as I do this approach. Okay, we've got speed limit exceeded there slightly yet. We're going a little bit quick here, but uh, we should slow down nicely. Uh, okay, so right on the localizer here, let's go ahead and go Vorlock. So we've got Lock Blue. And uh, because we have the glide slope indication here, I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm actually going to go for... Uh, vertical speed here. Let's get on vertical speed. I'm just going to de decrease the descent rate a bit. So, we'll see if we can try and match that to the actual glide slope itself. Um, we're actually slowing down to green dot speed now. The aircraft's gone into its approach phase. Um, so, as we're slowing down here, I'm going to put back the speed brakes and we're going to arm it. Go for flaps 15, 15. In other words, flaps 1. And the diamond is coming down now a little bit. We'll go back to 600 feet per minute. We've got flaps 15, 15 coming out. I would show you outside, but it's pitch black. So we can't really see anything there. <laughs> okay, you can hear the sound from the flaps though. You can hear the drag. Here, a little bit better in the back here. Bit of a rumble. All right, so the diamond's coming down now. I'm going to go ahead and just increase the VS just a touch here. Just going to try and see if I get it to uh, to sit on the diamond nicely. We'll go for land mode. Oh, what's just happened there with that button? That was strange. Okay, cool. So we've got lock blue, glide slope blue, alt blue. Now we should capture the glide slope. There we go. Glide slope star, look star. Brilliant stuff. I'm not sure why it's turning though. That's a bit interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and bring the speed back a bit. We're going to go for the S speed currently. See some of the lights below us now. It's very dark though, isn't it? Some of the lights are very, very dark. Very dim. Okay, so at 6,000 feet. Um, we've captured the localizer very far out here. So um, don't need to worry too much about the speed just yet. Taking another look at the charts here. So once we reach leg do, we've got 10 miles to go. 9.8 even, but we've got more or less 10 miles, we'll call it. All 
All right. There we go. The lights are actually starting to brighten up a bit now. Beautiful. Very good. Runway is in sight. One four left. Very cool. We've got a UPS on the ground there. DME is still not coming up for the ILS, which is interesting. All right, let's go ahead and put in E, D, D, K, one, four left here. That should be helpful for us. I'm going to go ahead and turn the music down for the final approach. We've got 12 miles to go. Let's go ahead for, let's go for flaps, uh, uh, flaps two. I can't remember what the, uh, 3015 is the next stage of flaps. Okay. Nose is dipping down quite, he uh, quite heavily there. 11 miles to go. Still no DME from the uh, ILS, which is interesting. We've actually got a 40 knot tailwind currently, so that's going to make it more difficult for us to slow down. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go ahead for flaps uh, three now, I believe. 205 is the speed. So speed is checked. Flaps, uh, flaps three. Nine miles to go. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start slowing down to our final approach speed, which is one. I actually forget what it was. One three five. Let's go for gear down. Nose wheel cam. It's impossible to see anything now, unfortunately. Okay, so we're slowing to our final approach speeds. Everything is looking good. All right, great stuff. Uh, as we pass the F speed here, we're going to go to flaps full. There we go. So flaps full. Five miles to go. Let's do our landing checklist. Uh, landing gear is down, auto brake is low, anti skid is uh, checked. Sats and flaps 40, 40, uh, 30 40, spoilers are armed. Uh, landing check is complete. Clone bond traffic, Black Sea 551 heavy is on short final, four miles for runway 14 left. Uh, clone bond traffic. I totally forgot I had my radios off then. That's a bit of a, a blunder, but never mind. Okay, so here we are. We're at final approach speed. We're looking good. We are on the glide slope. Let's land this thing. Um, Mariner, I'm not doing the return journey, by the way. I don't know if I responded to that. So apologies if I didn't. Um, so there we go. We've got a slight tailwind, four knots. Let's land this. Two knots win now. Very light winds. Oh, what's going on with the oak there? What happened? Corner feet checked. Getting a little bit low now, just pulling the nose up. And a bit too high now. Oh, I was, I was a bit, a bit slow at uh, responding there, but we've managed to fix it. Okay. 
Okay, and we are down full reverse. D brakes extended. Reverse normal. And uh, we don't seem to have D cell here with the auto brake. Did I forget to set that? But we are slowing down, nevertheless. 70 knots. Reverse is stowed. And there we go. Disarm the speed brakes here. Bring the flaps up. And we are going to come off at this high speed exit here. We're probably a bit too fast for this uh, exit even still. But let's get on those brakes. And let's get slowed down. We're probably going to get brakes hot message after this. Okay, so we left the active runway. Let's get the strobe lights off. And we'll get our landing lights off as well. Okay. Beautiful. Fantastic, guys. That was uh, that was pretty nifty. Uh, we'll get the nose light to taxi, and APU master on, and the APU starter. So we're going to take a right onto Alpha here and uh, head on that head on back. Blown bond traffic Black C551 is clear of runway 14 left taxiing to the cargo ramp via Alpha crossing runway 24 Cologne bond traffic. All right, great stuff. That was kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. That was uh, pretty pretty good i think as you can see here in the bottom left we've got our landing calculator here 154 feet per minute uh 1.6 g so maybe a little bit on the high side for the g force uh threshold uh 49 feet so perfectly re on uh, on the glide slope there even though i got that glide slope um indication uh, we managed to recover that. Um, in real life, that's probably a go-around, but uh, this is a simulator, so we're not going to be quite so strict on ourselves here. All right. Let's get the weather radar off. And uh, we'll also go ahead and uh, do something else. I've totally forgotten what we're doing. <laughs> Oh, okay, so transponder can go to uh, alt off. Plumbon traffic, Black Sea 551, crossing runway 24. All right, so crossing the runway, let's get the strobe lights on. We can see us crossing the runway there from the threshold. Love to see it. Okay, strobe lights off, now we're off the runway. APU is a veil. And uh, definitely want to stay on the taxiway here. <laughs> All right, so after landing checklist, slats and flaps are attracted, transponder is set. Oops, definitely need to do a bit of this. Uh, weather radar is off, spoilers are disarmed, APU is started. After landing checklist complete. All right, so we're going for stand Echo 3-3. I'm not sure why it's so bumpy on this taxiway. <laughs> Here we are. Now we can see the aircraft again. Now we can see it again. All right, Echo 3-3 should be a little bit further down here. All right, all right, all right. How long did that take us in total then? One hour 23 so far. All right, cool. So we've got nice lighting here on the apron. Let's go ahead and turn the runway turn off lights so we're not blinding the ground crew as we turn in. Uh, I'll turn the nose light off as well. 
Um, definitely going to slow down a bit. It's probably a bit speedy to be taxiing on the apron. Echo 3.5. I think Echo 3.3 three should be this one here. Nope, next one. Here we are. So this is Echo 3.3 three, just here. Unfortunately, no marshaller today. Last time I uh, pulled in into this airport, the marshaller spawned perfectly for me. Oh, look, there he is. There he is. Beautiful. Oh, that's so amazing. He's actually super accurate as well, like in terms of getting you to stop on the right line. There we go. It's so much easier to control aircraft in, uh, in X-Plane, I feel. In terms of the braking and uh, keeping the momentum going. Uh, look how slow I'm keeping this. One, one knot ground speed. And there we go. Parking brake is set. Let's just check. The uh, APU is actually running. It is indeed. It's ready to go. Let's turn the engines off. Don't need to turn the APU bleed on, really. This is a cargo aircraft. We don't need to keep any passengers cool. Uh, we'll turn the beacon light off now. Turn the fuel pumps off as well. Click spots are a bit funny for these when you're at an angle like this. You can see the... Uh, um, a AFS? A ADS coming off there. Uh, pitch trim in your jumper anyway. Window heat can come off as well as the probe heats and the smoke detection on both cargo components. Uh, both cargo components. I can't speak. Cargo compartments can come off as well. And I think we're about good there. Engine's nicely spooling down there. Are we still moving? We are. Why is that? Oh, the parking brake didn't come on. I definitely put the parking brake on. Oh, that's so sad after the... <laughs> that's so sad after the marshaller put us in right in the right spot. Like, look how nice and straight we are. The marshaller gets you to stop perfectly on this... Charlie line, which is for a Cat C aircraft. Um, but for whatever reason, the parking brake didn't apply. I think that must be a key binding thing. Beautiful. Okie dokie. So, after... Uh, sorry, parking checklist. So, APU bleed is uh, off. Engines are off. Uh, Delta P. Let's just check that is at zero. So, pressure page. Delta P is zero. Uh, lights and signs are as required. Fuel pumps are off. Window and probe heat is off. Parking brake and chocks. Uh, we can go ahead and set the chocks. We'll get an external power connected. We'll get the air stairs connected as well. As the loader will request that to come and take off our cargo. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, turn the external power on. We'll turn the APU master off. And the seat belts can come off as well. And uh, let's come outside and have a quick look at what's uh, what's occurring. Got the door open already. And the cargo door opening up there as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That was nice. That was nice. We'll have a look at the replay momentarily. Let's just get a bit of this cargo loading done. Uh, we'll just wait for it to be ready. All right, let's have a quick look. Anyway, in um, we'll have a look in Sim Toolkit whilst uh, we wait for the uh, the cargo loader to get set up. So bring up Sim Toolkit here. 
see what Sim Toolkit says. Okay, so Sim Toolkit's giving me a slightly higher landing rate, 253. Not the best, not the worst. Let's have a look at the landing report anyway. Uh, so this says 1.5G, so I suppose, yeah, I mean, a fairly positive touchdown, let's say, fairly, uh, fairly firm. But having said that, right in the touchdown zone, nearly exactly on the aiming point. So this is something I actually did yesterday uh, when I was flying this aircraft is I didn't flare quite enough. I probably could have got a much smoother touchdown there if I just flared a tiny bit more. But as you can see, I was just before the aiming point here or the 1,000-foot marker. So um, um, definitely had more room to flare there. Wouldn't have been a, a much of an issue if I'd just landed a little bit later there, to be honest. It would have even been better. However, we were right on the center line and uh, pointing right down the runway pretty much. So... I'm going to take that. That was pretty, pretty, um, I would say that's probably a routine landing in real life, I would probably say. So, yeah, fairly happy with that, actually. I'll take it. I'll take it. And uh, we can see in the replay as well what the actual landing rate was. Um, in fact, let me just check Volanta real quick because that also gives you a landing rate. Okay, that's even worse. I'm not even going to read that one out. <laughs> The landing rate just seems to be all over the place. This was 150, Sim Toolkit's 230, and then Volante's 300. So, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is we'll actually look at the vertical speed indicator here. We'll have a look at that on the replay and see what that actually reads as, as we touch down. So let's get the uh, unloading going on then. We'll come outside and just have a look here. All right, let's catch up with the chat whilst the cargo gets unloaded. And I'm going to disconnect from that sim. We're done on there now. All right, so chat, did you enjoy that flight? How did you like the A300 version 2? Uh, let's see. I'm under one of the arrivals and a departure from Dusseldorf. Um... Got you, dude. Amazing. Well, we should have looked out for you out the window. If you're doing a flight. Sorry, I must have missed that earlier when I was doing the approach. Oh, I see. That's where you live. Okay, I got you. Got you. The A300s are some of the loudest that come in for sure. Yeah, A300s, yeah. Very noisy aircraft. Obviously, they're very old aircraft and the engines on them are fairly old as well. They're not that efficient, you know, back in the day when they made this aircraft they didn't really care about fuel efficiency or noise <laughs> so yeah uh, but they're very very powerful very very powerful and it's a very powerful aircraft probably too powerful at the engines probably a bit overpowered um but nevertheless very enjoyable aircraft to fly in the sim that's for sure patrick hello how are you doing mate good to see you happy new year uh, let's see, the AN124 a few days ago wins out. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> what, a, uh, what an amazing plane that is. Lovely flap indicator, yeah. Certainly is in this aircraft. It's uh, very unique. Uh, Mariner saying, X-Plane looks so good at night. Yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic at night. I love X-Plane at night. Uh, Jordan says, was a great flight, man. Can't wait for the new New Year's Eve show. Let me know if you want some company. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, like I say, we're going to be streaming from about half 10. It might be 11. I might might do more like 11. We'll, we'll see how we get on. Um, but yeah, I'll be, um, I will, I will let you know what, what the situation is on Discord uh, once we get going. Okay, then. So we'll let the loader do its thing and we shall uh, have a look at the replay once that's done. In the meantime, let's have a quick look around this airport. So if you've got this airport, Cologne Bonn by Aerosoft, if you've got that, um, 
Airport in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You're probably going to be very familiar with this. It's very similar. Um, it's the exact same developer, Joe Erland Sund, one of the best scenery developers out there. Just so, so good. And um, yeah, I was saying the other day, I, I wish all sceneries were like this for X-Play, and I might be more interested in, in um, investing a bit more in the sim. Um, because it just looks so good, man. It looks so good. It arguably looks better than uh, than the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator version, to be honest. Um, obviously, there's a few low-res textures here and there, but for the most part, it is so good. You've got passengers walking about inside here. You've got a fully modeled interior. Even down here. People moving about inside, super, super cool. Again, you get this kind of stuff in the Microsoft Flight Simulator version, but um, yeah, it's just uh, super cool, I think. You know, I haven't checked out, I haven't checked in here. Is there anything in here? No, there isn't. Nice little car park there. The night lighting looks very realistic as well to me. It looks very believable. Even the brightness inside the terminals as well, that looks quite believable. I know some sceneries in Microsoft Flight Simulator, they can't seem to get the brightness right on the inside. But look at this, all the transparent roof and yeah, it just looks great. Got the uh, VDGS here as well. I wonder if that works. Be interested to uh, try that out sometime. Again, you've got moving passengers in here. You've got a fully modeled interior. Again, same as the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator version. Looking very, very good. Arrivals, uh, sorry, departures hall. And uh, yeah, fantastic scenery, I have to say. Joe Erland Sund and published by Aerosoft. Okay, let's see how this guy's doing. Okay, there we go. Just one more to go, I think. Yeah. Brilliant. Okie dokie. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm quite pleased with that landing. That wasn't too bad at all. Like I say, definitely could have done with a little bit more of a flare. Um, but nevertheless, I'm going to take that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm going to take it. But we'll see how it looks in the replay anyway. We'll see how much I flared. Um, I'm always, I, I think I always do this with aircraft that I don't fly often. I think I always tend to um, flare too little because I'm afraid of floating the aircraft. And I'd, ra I'd rather not float it, to be honest with you. I'd rather touch down a bit firmer than not float it because at the end of the day, floating down the runway is it's not, it's not the done thing, is it? You know what I mean? So... I think you've just got to get that really, really fine balance. And I suppose if you don't fly the aircraft regularly, it's a bit difficult to develop that muscle memory. Uh, so that's the excuse I'm using. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So I think all the cargo is done. There we go. Great stuff. Remove the loader. Um, we'll go ahead and remove the air stairs and... Um, I'm going to just remove the external power and the chocks as well. In fact, I need to turn the external power off first. I'm going to do that just for the replay, just in case the ground service is kind of attached to the aircraft and it looks very ugly. So let's have a look at the replay then. And we'll wind this back to the uh, landing. All right, so that's explain. Looks better than Flight Simulator 2020. <laughs> uh, it is explain. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It definitely does look better than Flight Sim 2020 in certain respects. Not not all the time. You can definitely notice a difference. 
Um, during the night, X-Plane definitely shines a bit more, I think. There we go. That landing didn't look too bad to me. Um, but yeah, it is X-Plane. And uh, yeah, like I say, in some areas it does look better. But there are some areas where you can definitely tell the difference. For example, if you look at the lighting here, so how it's, it's very pixelated when you uh, look at it from ground level. But the lighting looks excellent from far away, I have to say. The ground textures look great in X-Plane, I think, you know, on, on the Payware airports. Um, and, yeah, there's quite a few areas I could probably go on for a while. But the main thing that lets X-Plane down is the, uh, the lighting, I think, um, during the day. During the day. But uh, at night, it is, uh, it is exceptionally good looking, I think. Maybe a bit too dark. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's just pitch black in some areas, like totally pitch black. Where you would expect to see a little bit of light spill from maybe certain areas. But anyway, I'm probably over, over analyzing this. Let's have a look at the landing again. All right, so let's fast forward to the uh, final 40 feet here. Right, let's have a look at this. Right, okay, so 100 feet, 50, 40, and now start the flare here. Just a few degrees. Ah, yeah, I definitely could have flared uh, at least maybe one or two more degrees there. Definitely could have, uh, yeah. I think the place you want to have the nose in the flare for the A300, I think it's about um, about six or seven degrees there, just above this line, basically. And I think I just I just let it settle just on the line. I think if I go slow mo here, yeah. So there we go. We're about five degrees there, maybe a little bit more, about five point five there potentially. And then I think the nose just dropped down a tiny bit there. But yeah, I could have probably uh, flared a touch more there. Let's see what it looked like on this one. Alright, so here's the PFD and here's the vertical speed indicator. 30 feet, 20 feet. Still doing 500 feet per minute at this point. Coming off. 10 feet, 5 feet, and there's a touchdown, so 1, 2, 3, yeah, so it was about, it was about 300 feet per minute, really, which is, um, yeah, pretty, pretty average, actually, to be honest, I'm a little bit let down that I've seen that, but, <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, other than that, I think it was fairly good, fairly good landing. Let's see if we can see it from the outside. It tends to be too dark to see the aircraft at night. But let's see if we can actually make it out a bit. Unfortunately, you can't change the lighting on X-Plane when you're on the replay mode. See, from outside, that looks like a very good landing, I think. It's really difficult to see the wheels. Yeah, not too bad at all. There we go. Beautiful stuff. There we go. Fantastic. Whoa. All right then, guys. I think that's going to be me done for this stream. We will be back later on with a New Year's Eve stream, bringing in the new year um, with you guys. I'm still in isolation, so um, 
So yeah, I'm going to be doing a stream and uh, feel free to join me if you want to fly along. We're going to be flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator so you can jump on uh, multiplayer with me and we're just going to be flying VFR, pretty casual stuff. Um, and then if you look on my YouTube channel, um, there is an event already set up. If you go to that and look in the description, then there is an add-on that you will want to download because um, it's basically a, a fireworks add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator and it basically triggers fireworks at certain events, certain times um, of the year. And um, tonight, obviously, it's going to trigger fireworks at midnight in various cities. Um, and we're going to do a bit of a flight across the UK. It's even going to bring in the uh, new year, um, ending up in London and seeing all the fireworks over there. So um, it'd be great to see some of you there if you want to join. And um, yeah, that's going to be it from me for today. So enjoy the rest of the replay, guys. I am going to head out now. Let me see which camera I'm going to leave you guys on. Let's do this front-facing camera, I think. That's a nice one. Bit of a uh, GoPro-style camera here. Um, but nevertheless, once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support today. And I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic new year. If I don't speak to you later on, uh, happy new year to everybody. And uh, I'll catch you in 2022. Bye for now. Nephelius, also apologies if I missed your message. Uh, there's uh, add-ons for nice nightlights in... In which sim are you talking about there? Let us know and I'll look into it, dude.